Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. This is our debate. As you see, we have three very articulate politicians, and we are going to discuss, does the opposition really have a chance coming up to the next general election, or is it a done deal? I suspect one person on the panel will say it's a done deal, but there are three people here who will disagree. So I'm going to ask them to say, if it's not a done deal, why do you think that? I mean, what possible reason would anyone have to vote for you? So they're going to try and persuade you. We're going to try and make this vaguely formal and not just a TV debate. So of course, everything degenerates into a TV debate by the end. So what we will do is every speaker will speak for five minutes at the lectern, will tell us what their point of view is, and after they've all spoken for five minutes, then we'll make it a discussion. Before we actually have the debate, I thought I'd get your views before and after. How many of you think the opposition has a chance in the next general election? Put your hands up. Not so bad, huh? I thought we watch us. All right, how many of you think it's a done deal for the BJP? Okay, evenly divided. Either you people are genuinely divided or you're very bored and you're not answering. We'll, we, we'll figure that out. Let's start with the first. Yeah. No, they're not putting their hands up. Enough. Let's start with the first thing. Let's start with the assumption that the opposition does have a chance. There to tell us why she thinks the opposition has a chance. May I invite Priyanka Chaturvedi? You have to go there. I'll put you last after the question. Hello and good evening. And I'd like to begin with saying that uh, no, it is not a done deal that the Bharatiya Janata Party government would be coming back to power in 2024. And I have my reasons to say so. Today, the opposition is speaking up for the people of this country. We are talking about the farmers. We are talking about housewives. We are talking about working women. We are talking about cost of living. We are talking about unemployment. We are talking about the youth. We are talking about crony capitalism. And what is the Bharatiya Janata Party talking about? Bharatiya Janata Party is talking about how it keeps adding to its election tools these arsenals, which are known as the central agencies. They're talking about how do you make ECI the entirely compromised institution of India? They're talking about ED. How do you make it an extended department of the Bharatiya Janata Party? You're talking about the IT. You're talking about the CBI. And how they have become a toolkit for the Bharatiya Janata Party to keep consolidating their voter base and at the same time trying to do away with India's opposition altogether. But India's opposition is determined that we are not speaking for ourselves. We are not speaking only about how to come back to power. We are speaking about the entire idea. Now, we are, talk, we are speaking at a conference called Ideas of India. The idea of India. What is our idea of India? Our idea of India is something that the Prime Minister keeps speaking about. But he doesn't really practice it. He speaks about Vasudeva Kutambakam. If you are speaking about Vasudeva Kutambakam, how can you have differences between those who are strong and those who are weak? How can you have differences on the basis of caste and religious divides? How can you have hatred becoming a tool of consolidating your votes? And if you're talking about my idea of India, my idea of India is what democratic institutions and constitution is about. What did Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar strive for? He strove for a country which is equal for all. And we will continue speaking up for it as much as the Bharatiya Janata Party might want to thwart all these institutions, might want to undermine these institutions. And if you look at every election going state now, we are heading towards a scenario where people are going to be questioning the BJP and all the election promises that they had made way back in 2014. And no, what about we won't work? No, they cannot say, oh, this is what Congress used to do. Oh, this is what you all used to do. Because you all have come back on the promise of changing all that the Congress used to do, and you're committed to make a more vibrant India, a more inclusive India, a more economically empowered India, and you're totally silent about this. So we will continue fighting our fight, because we know this is a good fight. And we will continue to speak up for the people of this country and for democratic principles. And considering I'm from the Shiv Sena, now I do not need to even stress I'm from the Uddhav Bala Sahib Thakre Shiv Sena because people only know Shiv Sena as that of the Thakre's. And as much as you might bring in an ECI to change that status quo, 
in the minds of the people and in the minds of Maharashtra, we will continue to be the Shiv Sena which speaks for the people of Maharashtra. Thank you so much. And why do Thank you, Priyanka Chatwai. A small miracle. The first politician I know who finished in time without having to be revived. Okay. Second person giving the opposition case, Raghav Chadda. Can I ask you to speak? <clears throat> Is 2024 a done deal for the BJP? The answer to my mind is no. But before I come to the mathematics of it, permit me to say that today a new brand and a new vocabulary of politics in India is required to challenge the mighty BJP. A new idea of politics, a new messenger of the political vocabulary is required. And I think that is something that the Aam Admi Party does certainly bring to the table. Having said that, Having said that, um, let me first rewind back to the election of uh, 1977 before we speak more and more about the upcoming 2024 general election. In the year 1977, under the concept, under the formula of one candidate against one candidate of the BJP, the entire society at large and not just political parties got together and they defeated the mighty Congress. Post the 1971 India-Pakistan war, liberation of Bangladesh, the goodwill and the popularity of Mrs. Indira Gandhi was at its peak. But then of course, due to rampant corruption, unemployment, inflation, and an authoritarian regime, that, gulted, that, that popularity and goodwill melted, and it melted faster than an ice cream on a hot summer day. As a result, the people got together to defeat the mighty Congress. No one had at that point in time thought that Mrs. Gandhi could be defeated. And Mrs. Gandhi was not only defeated at a pan-India level, but she also lost her own constituency, with Sanjay Gandhi also losing his own constituency, and the power of people winning that election. In that election, the combined opposition got 294 seats. And out of those 294 seats out of 543, almost 200 seats were won by a victory margin of more than 25% of the votes. Not only that, the Congress, the mighty Congress in the year 1977, won only 154 seats. And out of those 154, roughly 115 seats came from the southern part of India. That's Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Andhra, etc. Because the Congress had a substantial presence in that belt. Now let's come to the BJP of 2024. If the opposition were to come together under the banner of one candidate versus one candidate of the BJP, or one election symbol versus one election symbol of the BJP, not only can the BJP be defeated, the BJP can be defeated, and a more crushing defeat can be handed out to the BJP than was handed out to Mrs. Gandhi in the year 1977. It's also because Mrs. Gandhi's Congress may have had a strong presence in southern India in the year 77. Today's BJP has no presence in southern India of the 2024. BJP has zero seats in Tamil Nadu. BJP has zero seats in Kerala. BJP has zero seats in Andhra. And I think about three or four in Telangana. And therefore, I think the mighty BJP can be defeated. Not only this, BJP has lost nine of its most formidable allies over the last five years. With the Shiromani Akali Dal in Punjab dumping the NDA, to Shiv Sena in Maharashtra dumping the NDA, to JDU Nitish Kumar dumping the NDA. 
i think the bjp stands weakened and all right thinking individuals and not just political parties i think people at large need to come together to defeat the bjp but this will only happen if we have three things which i call the 3ms the 3ms that can defeat the bjp one a new message b two a new messenger and three a new model of governance thank you thank you raghav that was a very compelling speech and i'm sure people are looking for a new messenger though i note you didn't say who this messenger would be but i can guess <laughs> all right may i ask kavita rao to speak now good evening everyone thank you abp for having a very timely discussion and debate on one of the most important subjects because this is a subject which will affect 140 crores of our indians and this will affect the future of india and the image of india internationally so thank you so much for having a very timely and an apt debate now i've heard my friends priyanka and raghav speaking about how bjp can be defeated i want to once again again agree with them reiterate that not bjp can be defeated but bjp must be defeated why bjp must be defeated two things um, we had as indians collectively given power to the current government believing in them that what congress could not do in so many years bjp will come and do it because bjp had promised multiple things in the first time 2014 when we gave them an opportunity with 282 seats they had promised for lot of things one being bringing back the black money which only increased but never come back one is 2 crore job every year which nobody has seen three a proper policies and development model and stopping the rupee from falling which has never happened well indians being indians all of us forgave mr modi we said chalo 5 saal ke aur 5 saal le lijiye lekin kuch to badlav la ke dikhaiye from 282 we reinforced uh, mr modi strength with bjp strength we gave gave them 303 seats in the next election but in the next 5 years again unfortunately people gave them 303 but all bjp gave us is three black laws which had ended up being responsible for 750 farmer farmers dying in sing border they were anti farmers no jobs again rupee value still falling zero covid management and the list goes on and on now here the point is if a government gets 10 years of chance and doesn't perform should we not root them out that is a fundamental question two we are not asking for them to bring the moon down to the earth we are just saying if we can do mangalyan at the cheapest price in this world and be proud of it why can't we give water to every household in this country in bombay the financial capital of this country we still get only two hours of water every single day in bombay whichever friend i talk to they tell us do gante aata hai we don't know kab aata hai lekin in hyderabad within 7 to 8 years we managed to make sure we gave water to uh, water 24 hours in every small village of telangana if it can happen in telangana the same model can be re replicated across the nation and why is in the current bjp government trying to do that we are asking for basics nothing else drinking water irrigation water jobs that is all we are asking for a new state like telangana if we can give away two and a half lakh government jobs in eight years why is the central government sitting on 12 lakh vacancies in the government of india not even giving a single notification forget about other notifications in the premium institutes like iits iams 28000 jobs are vacant today and the government doesn't want to fill up but we want to become vishwaguru how are we going to become vishwaguru without teaching our students what to do so these are the fundamental questions drinking water irrigation water jobs these are the only three things that we are asking in these three things modi government has failed utterly so we must root them out of power and yes the opposition stands united today we have multiple times conducted various rallies from brs party where aam aadmi party was present where shiv sena was present where various other parties like cpm cpm were present so uh, today opposition stands united 
and we would like to continue this unity and we seek the support of the people. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That was a really powerful speech. Okay, Poonam, you now defend the government against all three of these people. But you can have longer than five minutes if you want. It's just one against three. Thank you very much. I don't think I need five minutes. Uh, I'll also follow the same rule as though it's threes to one. But I love hearing my friends and colleagues in parliament talking about the mighty BJP, the mighty BJP, and the mighty BJP. I would like to tell them, you are not the ones who call us mighty BJP. The BJP is mighty BJP because people of India trusted BJP and Honorable Narendra Modi to take idea of India forward. That's why it's mighty BJP. We don't have an arrogance of mighty BJP. We have that strength of mighty BJP. And that BJP is mighty because people of India trusted us in 2014. And as my dear friend Kavita told me in 2019, with bigger numbers back in power and trusting. You know, idea of India, when we talk about India, the young India, we talk when we look at world and India is the bright spot right now. I remember before 2014, the Fragile Five, and now in 2024, when we go for the election in just 10 years, from the Fragile Five before 2014 to the fifth largest economy of the world is India. That's the strength and changes we could see. Before 2014, we were discussing, ye scam hai, wo scam hai, coal hai, ye hai, plane hai, jija ji hai, nana ji hai, taya ji hai. But from 2014 to 2024, we just saw a clean government which says and does what has been told. Promises are not to be said, but they have to be fulfilled. And when you see BJP's agenda and BJP's promises, whatever you look forward to, I was just telling Mr. Sangvi that uh, everybody is talking about Congress and its history, but sadly, the supposedly the biggest opposition party in parliament uh, is not present here. So I don't know how seriously even media is taking Congress right now. But the way we look forward to that in 2014 to 2024, the idea was, I still remember one old now history came out from uh, Gauravji, so I just realized that one biggest leader of Congress had said ki Delhi se ek rupiah nikalta hai to logo tak pandra paise pahunchte hain. Lekin I'm proud to say that direct benefit transfer in India, the kind of leapfrog we have seen in that, that ek rupiah Delhi se nikalta hai to direct benefit transfer se ek rupiah janta ke haat mein pahunchta hai. That strength and that idea of India we are talking about. In 2024, when we're looking forward to elections, what promises were made? Today you talk about from Fragile Five to the strength of fifth largest economy. When we talk about the, around the world, India is the bright spot and around the world when you look at India, India is growing higher with 6% and when you see recession all around the world, you see the bright spot of India because under the leadership of Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Everybody is saying the mighty BJP, hum sab saath mein milke ladenge aur karenge. Now let's not get into their calculation of saath mein ladna aur ye karna. We always see it, the circus on TV. But very importantly to my dear friends, I really want to tell them, Modi nahi, to aur kon? Pehle aap tay kar lijiya. Usko tay karne ke liye aapke paas bhi ek saal hai. And I'm very happy to you to call mighty BJP. You are also mighty in some states and not mighty in some states. You actually very heftily lost in a lot of states. So when you talk about idea of India, I think you should also see how BJP has worked hard for past 40 years to take the idea of India forward. That's why the trust of people is in BJP. I don't want to get into a negative politics. Positively, when you look at youngsters, someone talked about jobs, someone talked about how uh, we are taking things forward. I would like to say that India is the bright spot which is taking, we have 100, you know, unicorns in this country. And in past eight years, we have the national education policy, which was only planned and discussed, but it's right now here for people to take the education and understanding forward. The India's youth, the Gen Z now, who's now seeing India in a different manner, is believing the idea of India. 
they believe that india is the bright spot and my dream is connected to india's dream because there's one mighty leader by the support of mighty india is prime minister narendra modi and that's how we are taking the idea of india forward uh, i don't want to uh, say certain things about mumbai but i want to request since yesterday i've been seeing leaders from different parties honorable chief minister of delhi also had come and my friend priyanka ji is, is sitting here and my friend kavita ji is sitting here it's not bombay and i think part of shiv sena should say it's mumbai and we have made this as mumbai and we call ourselves mumbai kar so first idea of opposition should get together what the emotions of every party in their ideology is together then we'll look forward to if not modi who and till that time i have full faith in people of india to not to stop the idea jo bullet train ke vichar leke hum aage badh rahe hain वंदे भारत के नाम से हम हर गांवों को और शहरों को जोड़ रहे हैं छोटे छोटे एयरपोर्ट बना के लोगों तक पहुंच रहे हैं ये आइडिया ऑफ इंडिया लोगों के मोबाइल फोन तक अपना पैसा आ रहा है विधवा हो युवा हो हर किसी का डायरेक्ट बेनिफिट ट्रांसफर से उसकी ताकत उसको सीधे मिल रही है वी वॉन्ट टू टेक दैट करप्शन फ्री आइडिया ऑफ इंडिया फॉरवर्ड रीच टू द लास्ट माइल दैट्स दी आइडिया वॉन्ट टू टेक फॉरवर्ड एंड लेट्स वट है इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर आई विश ऑल माई फ्रेंड्स ऑल द वेरी बेस्ट थैंक यू वेरी मच Thank you, Poonam. I had a feeling that one against three would not be an unequal fight because you were more than capable, and I was right. Congratulations. Okay, so now I ask questions. Shall we do this in the order in which they spoke? Priyanka Chaturvedi. The BJP's attack is that when you talk about the opposition, you talk about opposition unity. None of you people can really get along, and it gets a little more pointed. they say you people can't even get along in your own party right under the nose of your leader the chief minister the majority of his mlas went through the back door and he had no idea so i mean how will you unite when you can't even manage your own party no no 8 years ago nobody had the idea that a lot of promises were being made with regards to employment with the, uh, regards to zero corruption with regards to doubling of farmer income with regards to youth getting jobs that they would see a phase where you are seeing unemployment at its highest when you're seeing corruption in terms of crony capitalism she was saying there's no jija ji no dada ji no baba ji bhabhi ji mami ji whatever now you have adani ji so <laughs> there is corruption uh, so what eight, eight years ago we were promised stronger institutions eight years ago we were promised that enforcement directorate will do its job income tax will do its job cbi won't be a caged parrot anymore what are we seeing now cbi is not a caged parrot it's a comatose parrot it's on its death bed and we all wanting to revive it the opposition is talking about revival opposition is talking about the promises that they had made and they have kept these unkept promises and we have to talk about them so now coming to my party yes we have seen an exodus of people who have left us why did they leave us now let's go to the extended department of bharatiya janata party which was put to work to gun after the opposition everybody was shown their files and what happened to let's say the pratap sarnayaks and eknath shinde's whose files were open what happened to that what's the movement and the very same ed has now got a stamp of approval uh, say taking away 40 mlas and for making a government fall you're seeing the you know entirely compromised inti- institution being wheeled in to give it a stamp of approval and this is not about shiv sena anymore this can happen to aam aadmi party tomorrow it can happen to uh, brs tomorrow it can happen to any other party tomorrow i would say if this is going to be the model of how eci should work everyone who's interested in contesting an election should not come from any political party just allow them a symbol and they can be auctioned at a political party's behest and whoever has the highest amount of money to bid for these mlas give it to them let's not have the concept of political parties what is a 10 schedule for if you're going to be misreading the 10 schedule so those are all you know uh, debates that we can have on constitutional morality and democratic principles it it's happened to us today it could happen to any other party tomorrow if bharatiya janata party continues its agenda of making them all a part of the election year election hearing process they are the election toolkit for the bjp and that is the unfortunate part and it is not the shiv sena or political party is being harmed it is our idea of india which is being harmed it is our democracy which is being harmed and it is our constitution which is getting compromised that is all i'd like to say here strong stuff raghav she talked about the bjp targeting the opposition using corruption cases you've seen something like that in delhi with the liquor scam 
There's talk that Manish Sisodia may be arrested. Your leader, in fact, said yesterday that he'd heard rumors to that effect. Do you agree that the BJP, rather than fighting you guys on the electoral battlefield alone or on a political battlefield, is now relying on framing you guys? You have to be a coward to use agencies and state instrumentalities to attack your pop political opponents. I would say that BJP will be well advised to attack opposition parties and particularly my political party in the electoral battlefield by contesting an election against us. But if they choose to unleash the instruments of the state on my party and my party colleagues, it only goes to show that how frightened the BJP is, that mandates are being given to the enforcement directorate, the CBI, the income tax, so on and so forth, to just find and if not find, fabricate evidence against the Aam Aadmi Party and put leaders in jail. But permit me to, um, uh, you know, uh, say this, that Aam Aadmi Party and leaders of the Aam Aadmi Party are not scared of these agencies are going to jail. We are fighting for the country. This is a this is a political party that was born on the streets of this country fighting a corrupt regime and a change in the dispensation. So therefore, we are all fighters, we are born fighters and we are willing to take on these state instruments. However, I think uh, the issues today that matter to the people of India are not just how the opposition will get together or whether instruments of the state like ED, CBI, etc. have been unleashed. I think the issues that matter to the common man that is sitting in this room or watching this show uh, on their television screens are issues of unemployment, which is at a 45-year high under the leadership of Prime Minister Modi and the BJP. Issues of inflation that have touched a 30-year high, a three-decadal high under the leadership of Prime Minister Modi and the BJP. The issue of devaluation of rupee where rupee has today crossed 80 uh, in, in front of the dollar. The issues of how corporate India is being benefited by giving them tax waivers and loan write-offs, but in turn, neither jobs are being created, nor the ch go goods and commodities are be becoming cheaper, nor private investment is coming. And above all, you know, uh, the, the colleague from the BJP mentioned about startups and unicorns in her opening remarks. I would like to ask her, does she know that less than 10% of India's startups today see their fifth anniversary. This is the plight of Startup India today, which the BJP tom-toms at the, at the national stage. These are the core issues that must be discussed at a panel like this. And permit me to, in conclusion, say this, that the BJP, when it came in power in 2014 and throughout their journey up till 2022, kept on saying, we will deliver in the year 2022, wait for 2022. What will we do in 2022? One, we will double the farmer's income. Has the income of farmers doubled? The Standing Committee on Agriculture in Parliament says that the income levels of Indian farmers has reduced by a whopping 30% in more than four states in India. Number two, they said that bullet trains will start plying on rail tracks come 2022. How many bullet trains have you, Virji, traveled since the year 2022? Third, they said every Indian and every Indian family in this country will get a house, a pakka makan. How many Indians have got a pakka houses? Have all Indians got pakka houses? They went on to say that India will become a 5 trillion economy by the year 2022. As a chartered accountant and as a student of economics, permit me to say that at the current growth rate, it will take seven more years to India for India to become a five trillion economy. These were the promises that were made. And today, when you stand up to the BJP and ask them, what about your promises of 2022? They say, wait for 2047 when India will complete 100 years of independence. That is when we'll deliver. Today, we are living in the day and age of Amrit Kal, so therefore you can't ask us questions. I think these are at the heart of every Indian and every Indian household. Unemployment, price rise, corruption, waivers to corporates, joblessness, 
the depreciation of the Indian rupee. These are the issues. And of course, the plight of the Indian farmer, where the NCRB data says that more than 30 farmers in India commit suicide on a daily basis. And the debt of an Indian farmer has increased by a whopping 54% under the BJP's administration since the year 2014. These are the core issues that are at the heart of every Indian today and that must be answered at, at a panel like this, Mr. Thang. Thank you, Raghav. Your turn. The Prime Minister has said, and I think many people probably agree, that the BJP, whatever its faults, is different from many other political parties in India, which he says are, and I quote, family parties. And he says they're beset by corruption scandals. And what he's offering is an alternative to those family parties and to that corruption. I think you're probably one of the parties he has in mind. So how do you respond? First of all, as an extension to what Raghav and uh, Priyanka was saying, I would like to say, British government's policy was divide and rule. Today, BJP and Modi government's rule is raid and rule. So wherever you have to go, rule from the back doors, you raid, you divide that party and you rule. That is the policy right now of the BJP government. <laughs> Second, when Mr. Modi very clearly said, na khaunga, na kane dunga, Parivar vaad, nepotism, corruption. What is he doing in the case of Mr. Adhani? Adhani ji, aapke extended parivar se hai, aapke dost hai, kya problem hai? Ek mahine ke piche, just in January 25th to today, February 25th, a company, Indian listed company, loses 12 lakh crores. LIC loses 80,000 crores. And Honorable Prime Minister is saying nothing. We ask for a joint parliamentary committee, we fight in the parliament, he says nothing. And if Mr. Modi is clean, he should at least now come out and say, put up a parliamentary committee. If you yourself are not clean, Mr. Modi, how are you even accusing the rest of the parties for being corrupt? That's a simple question. If you're not shielding Mr. Adani, why don't you just do the probe? They're doing a probe on me, they're doing a probe on 100 other people from the opposition parties. Why is Mr. Adani not being probed? Why is ED, SEBI, etc. not proactive in probing Mr. Adani? That is a simple question today. That in turn proves that Mr. Modi and BJP is not as clean as they say they are. That is precisely why we believe they will be voted out for this time. Two, and since this is a majorly women-dominated panel, I would like to request our, uh, my dear friend Poonam that Poonam, it's been 10 years, Women Reservation Bill is pending. That was one of the poll promises in 2014 and also 2019 of Bharti Janta Party. Naren Modi ji has said, we will pass the Women Reservation Bill, which is not yet We have one more session to go. I honest, earnestly request Honorable Prime Minister and my very dear friend Poonam ji to get it passed. So women, political representation in all the houses will be more. Two, in, in, uh, from the time in 1830s, when Indian census has started, not even during the world wars, World War I, World War II, census never stopped. But in Modi regime, from 2014 to 2022, no census of India. We don't know how many people are there in India now. My demand today is, census should happen immediately, and OBC census should definitely happen immediately. Otherwise, we cannot, we cannot, rule this country, we cannot allocate funds in a proper manner. This is our sec second demand. So we can go on and on and on about what Mr. Modi has not done and why he should be doing it, just by blaming the regional parties, saying you are from a parivar. My parivar, my entire parivar was on streets fighting for the state of Telangana. We came into politics, we came into people when we did not even have an idea that a state would be formed and then we will come to power, then you become MLA MP, no, nothing. We were just fighting on the streets, rubbing shoulder to shoulder with any common man in Telangana today, and we automatically translated into a political party and became into power. So all parivars are not same. All parivars, if Modi ji wants to say parivarvad, no. We are in a parivar where we are facing very clearly and very boldly the agencies. Why isn't your parivar member, Mr. Adani, facing the agencies? That is a simple question.
Okay, Poonam, let me just, they've said so many things. Let me summarize the main points of attack. One, I think it came from Priyanka, is that she believes in a kind of India that is no longer in existence. The other, and that's I think a point that's been made by everybody, is that you're not really content fighting elections. You get your opponents framed, you have them raided, you keep telling people they're crooks. Every time there's any chance of any opposition coming up to you, the ED is dispatched faithfully to raid them and to blind them. That's, I think, allegation two. Allegation three is, yes, yes, there's big talk about what you've achieved, but as uh, my speaker after speaker has said, and Raghav particularly, those points are not accurate. This is all hype. This is a jumla. You haven't actually done anything for the economy. The promises have not been kept. You can take as long as you want because there are big charges. <laughs> no, I won't take too much. I should have. Uh, I didn't know this kind of show is happening. I would have gotten my pen and paper also to write all the questions down. But I'm very happy to answer as many as I can do. First of all, uh, Priyanka ji has placed a very rightly said she wants the idea of India. I think the idea of India in my speech also I said that every Indian gets his due, what is promised directly. And that's what idea of India is. When she was talking about 10th schedule, party, infighting, ye wo, fala dimka. I think some of the matters are subjudice. It's better I do not speak on it because I'm not a lawyer. And uh, as I'm not a CA, but I can give some answers to that also as being a little senior colleague in parliament. But very importantly, what is happening with these uh, state parties. It just, I heard a word Tom Tom. I'm creating a Tom Tom, BJP is doing it. Of course, I am BJP and BJP is Tom, uh, me. But it's not about creating a Tom Tom, it's just telling people what we have done. Now, all my dear friends sitting here are telling about idea of India, spoke about how BJP is wrong and this mighty BJP has to be defeated. एक ने अपने स्टेट में क्या अच्छा काम हो रहा है वो अब तक नहीं बताया कि हमने किया तो आप ये करके दिखाओ। You think about it. I mean, it's not like I'm putting some allegation on you, but at least you should have said, Poonam, I have done certain things in Delhi. Why didn't you do this in Delhi? Uh, in you know, in other states. If Maharashtra has done two and a half years when Uddhav ji's uh, uh, Sena was uh, working, we have no. You have done so much, but I'm just trying. I, I'm not. You know, I'm not here any, having any problem with that. But you should have actually come up with an idea what you have done and what you have not done. But it is all about, you know, I don't like to use such words, but let's now grow up and not to be crybabies of questioning a party who's selected, elected by people of India. Everybody sitting here is voted by people, their party, her party, my party, Kavita Ji's party. So let's get into a more positive debate that this is what we want as idea of India. That's point number one. Now what has happened in Shiv Sena is what election commission has done. We have seen a lot of discussions going on. But always questioning uh, every uh, state of uh, agencies, I think somewhere then you can fight it on the street, you can fight it more logically on it is what the expectation I will have it. Third, someone is someone's extended family. I think on the prime minister's clear record. I think we should also think when we talk about Prime Minister on what level and how do we connect Prime Minister to certain people. And when the Congress leader who's done such a big Bharat Jodo all over India, I realized he was always in his speech, I was in the parliament, he was saying Adani, Adani, Adani. So I felt he had no idea what he was talking about. I don't know what he understands about financials. Actually, Gaurav can help him out. But in Marathi, in Marathi, Adani means यहाँ पे राजीव जी बैठे हैं अडानी मेंस जो अनपढ़ है तो जो आपको लड़ना है पढ़ के लड़िए और पॉइंट लेके आके लड़िए दिस इज़ व्हाट आई वांटेड टू से ऑन दिस टॉपिक राघव जी सेड अबाउट स्टार्टअप इंडिया एंड स्टैंडअप इंडिया आई एम नॉट इवन टॉकिंग अबाउट स्कीम आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट गिविंग अ बेस टू द स्टार्टअप इंडिया इज दी ओनली कंट्री वेर नॉट टेन परसेंट फिफ्टीन टू टेन ट्वेंटी परसेंट स्टार्टअप डू सी दर फिफ्थ एनिवर्सरी and we do work on it. These are the numbers have been placed all over the world. That's why I'm trying to tell you. I'm just throwing numbers at it. Third, uh, what you were asking about idea of India? 
No, I think you've handled that. That was uh, Priyanka's first question. Respectfully, okay, yes. The question you haven't handled is that these are all jumlas, that the actual statistics don't live up to these promises. Sir, I am not even coming with Punjab, Maharashtra, two and a half years uh, jumla numbers. I'm not talking about what Delhi has done. I'm not talking about my friend Telangana has done. Because all of us are, again, elected by people of this country. Again, I'm saying, when we talk about a certain kind of positive politics, I also want to hear what you have done and what you expect a particular party to done. That's what I'm trying to take this discourse and narrative of India towards that corner. And uh, any other ways, if I want to talk about women reservation bill, I think I also support that, Kavita ji. We have three and a half sessions still left. And I would like to take that idea forward and put it forward, that women's reservation bill. And in coming time, of course, with the new parliament, will we have more representation for parliamentarians, which is required for this 140 crore uh, population of India. And I think we will be very positive on that. This is what I want to take it forward. All right, I have all the, Raghav, we're at the end of our time, I let you rebut. I have to let everybody else rebut, because everybody else, I think, wants to rebut it. But I actually enjoyed the debate because we had what? Outstanding parliamentarians speaking on issues, not resorting to personal abuse, not attacking each other, not interrupting. It's up to you to decide who convinced you or who didn't convince you. So let's do the same vote we did at the beginning. How many of you think the opposition has a chance? A little bit more? Some more, no? The number has increased. The number has increased, yes. How many of you think that this is all talk? At the end of the day, the election is a done deal for the BJP. Okay. Pretty much the same number as last time. So, this is the debate. This bears no relation to reality. This is a very unrepresentative audience, what Mr. Deshmukh here would call a self-selecting sample. Is, so, Mr. Sanjit, I would, this is a very good representation of the vote share also, <laughs> where roughly 37% are with BJP and 63 are with the with That's the one way of looking at it. I just forgot to get my party karikarta because I did not believe in that idea of India for clapping. Because okay. I know all of them from Mumbai who comes from supports which ideology and they are my very good friends. Very good okay, friends. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> all right. I think, I think we'll all agree. Are, I think we all agree that this doesn't mean anything in terms of the national vote, but it does mean something in terms of the debate. If these people have been able to change some minds, then the debate has been a success. But I have to say that whatever views I had, when I heard Poonam speak, I was just so impressed by what a great job she did fighting three different people. Very much, I think, the speaker of the debate. Thank you very much. Like, we're already five minutes over. Thank you so much, and thank you to all our participants. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Requesting you all to kindly remain on stage for just a minute as I invite on stage uh, Indrajit Rai, input editor, ABP News, to kindly present a memento on behalf of the network and show our appreciation for all our guests. Ladies and gentlemen, this is certainly just a curtain raiser to what we can expect ahead of the 2024 elections. Really appreciate our guests joining us today. A big round of applause from Aam Aadmi Party's Raghav Chadda. Priyanka Chaturvedi, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you also to Poonam Mahajan for bravely taking on the opposition on the stage today. And thank you very much, Kavita Ji, for your powerful words. Ek bar zor dar taliyon ke saath ek bar phir as we say goodbye to these wonderful panelists. What a lovely debate. Thank you, Mr. Sangui, once again.
Well, our final session of the day is just about to begin as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Sangvi.